Welcome back. And we have Krista Kafer joining us. She's the co-host of Kelly and Kafer on KNUS Radio. Nice to have you here. Great to be here. Let's talk presidential politics. It's 100 days. So uh, what do you think so far? Well, you think, think about it this way. The 100 days is kind of arbitrary, right? When FDR said first 100 days, he was actually talking about legislative days. So if we were to add up the legislative days, really Trump's first 100 days is actually in like July or August. So, you know, let's, I don't, I'm not saying we should cut him some slack, but just remember that 100 days is kind of an arbitrary marker. That said, he's had, what, two dozen executive orders. He's passed a number of bills, or they've passed, gone to his desk, and he's, he's signed them. Supreme Court nominee. Where I say he's probably fallen short is there haven't been enough executive confirmations. And part of that is his problem. He has not put forth a number of, of nominees, and he needs to do that. So if you had to give him a grade right now, what would you give him? You know, grading on a curve for Trump, I will give him a C. And I say that because he has cut back on the goofy tweets. I think he is starting to mature a little bit in the position. I like the Supreme Court nominee, now Justice Gorsuch. I'll give him a C. All right, so no Obamacare repeal yet. Not what yet. That? And I don't think that's his fault. I would say that there are some significant disagreements within the party. And that's okay. It took Democrats a good, what, year to put forth and, and, and sign into law Obamacare. Right. If it takes a year, it takes a year. There are significant disagreements. Those disagreements are all policy uh, policy and some political things as well. They get that hashed out behind behind the scenes. I think we'll see a bill. The immigration issue is, is huge in Washington. It's huge here. Do you think that, that his, what's happening in Washington will will affect our races as we move forward here in Colorado? You know, I don't know because a lot of people appreciate that the law is actually being uh, is actually being uh, put, you know put into place and 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 being administered. I think there's been frustration, particularly among Republicans, that the laws have been on the books and yet so many people seem to avoid any consequence. The fact that President Trump has focused primarily on criminal aliens, people who have broken the law, in addition to the laws of of being here illegally, that that uh, I think that. It means that I think four more people are going to appreciate what he's done than not appreciate it. His tax plan really lean on details, and a lot of people say it really offers the benefits to uh, the wealthier Americans. I think it's an opening, kind of an opening shot. Think about the, what is it, the art of the deal. He puts forth the plan, then Congress will work on it, and then there'll be something more detailed. My biggest concern, it would seriously enlarge the deficit and ultimately the debt. I think they need to find that sweet spot where you encourage the economy by having tax cuts, but you don't have such a loss of revenue that you end up adding to the deficit and ultimately the debt. You don't sound like someone who's giving uh, President Trump a C. What does that sound like? Oh, does it sound like a B plus? <laughs> you know, I, I say a grading on a curve because I think he is starting to mature in the position. Um, as a candidate, he could be obscene. Um, but I think he is trying to temper what he says in public. The tweets have gotten better. He's made some, some actions on uh, the foreign stage that I would say have been relatively responsible. It seems like he's listening to his generals. And isn't that what we had hoped for? I, mean, I didn't vote for Donald Trump, but I had hoped once he became president that he would begin to mature in that position and, and, and become a president that everyone hoped he would become. And maybe he's on that way. Let's talk about Jeff Hayes for a moment. You, you heard the conversation I just had with him, the, uh, the new Republican Party chair. What do you think about the, the Repo Republican Party moving forward under his leadership? He seems very mainstream. He seems uh, thoughtful. Seems like somebody who would avoid controversy. I think those are all the things that they need in this chairman. Somebody who can steer the ship, somebody who respects the choices of the voters with regard to the candidates, but can do the fundraising. Somebody who has a, you know, a, a mature, statesmanlike presence on television. I think he's going to do a great job. 2018 is going to be a huge year for Colorado. Yes, it is. So you've got Congressman Ed Perlmutter's seat opening up. The seventh, it's a very split district. We need to get just the right candidate for that. Because if you get a candidate who is too conservative, that's not going to fly in that district. But yet that's not going to start stop the too conservative candidates from running. So getting that, getting just the right person for the Republican ticket, and then of course the governor's race, and that's huge. Absolutely it is, and we will be watching that. All right, Krista Kafer, thank you so much as always for being here. We appreciate it.